Today we saw on Twitter that the Zodiac Killer may have actually been found out. Um, there's a group of people that's kind of just retired uh, agents or policemen who have come out and said, hey, we know who this guy is. Um, and it's it's pretty crazy. So just to recap on all of the, uh, the, the horrific things that the Zodiac Killer has been accused of, um, he's known for at least five murders between 1968 and 1969 in the San Francisco area. And he's most known for his letters taunting police, including nearly unsolvable coded ciphers that have left the American public just um, dazzled for decades at this point. And so today we have... Um a picture of his first two victims and his first two vic victims are um, 17 and 16 years old and both of them uh, were on a first date and ended up going and driving down a lover's lane and they were both shot and killed there um, here they are on the screen the first uh, boy is David Ar Arthur Faraday he was 17 years old and Betty Lou Jensen 16 years old and they were shot and killed on December 20th 1968 and so um that that was a really national story because uh, as as the evidence came out, they found that David got out of the car. Um, it sounds like the Zodiac killer pulled up next to them and they were kind of getting out of the car to investigate. And David was shot in the back of the head. And then Betty turned to run away and was shot five times. And so then again, these these kind of murders kept taking place over and over again. And so my first thought on this story was beyond the good news that we may have found who this person is. Um, what at what point do you think uh, we've reached as American society when we're putting our faith in Dog the Bounty Hunter and these like uh, crime solving Facebook groups on the Internet to figure out what what's happening? What do you think that says about our current state? I think that's an interesting question. I've been watching a new series on Hulu. It's called Only Murders in the Building. Um, if you've seen it, great show. But they talk about that, too. The, the premise of the show is that there's these. Um, these people who are big fans of a crime podcast, and they're played by Selena Gomez and Martin Short um, and Steve Martin. And so the premise of the show is they're these fans of a crime podcast, and then a crime happens in their hotel, and they decide that they're going to start their own crime podcast and simultaneously solve the crime. So I think that um, that's a debate that is a real one. I mean, we can make a show about it, and we can talk about it in pop culture. I think it's a real debate um, and we talked about it in the Gabby Petito case as well um, with, you know, is it a good thing that people on TikTok are solving crimes? Is it a good thing that if there's new evidence in a case, people are more worried about posting it on TikTok to get views than they are about contacting the police? Um, and I think, honestly, I think it's a little bit of both. I think it can be good and it can be bad. I think it's a combination and it's a balance, like a lot of things in life. I think that social media can be very helpful in solving a crime. Um, maybe if we had social media back in the 1960s when these uh, Zodiac Killer murders occurred, then maybe we would have found him then. So I think they can be, but when you get to a point that you're doing it for publicity instead of for safety or for public health or whatever the case may be, that's where I think it gets a little dicey and maybe um, not an area that we want to get into as a country. I don't know yeah. what you think. Yeah, I mean, at this point, how many years have state and federal officials had to solve this case? Like, it's not like everybody was like, oh, well, we're going to hire some, like, third party to investigate this. Like, they've had all this information for decades. And it took more or less a group of committed people doing this as a hobby to get yeah. some type of headway in this department. So I think that just points back to a larger issue where the American people – have a lack of belief, I think, in their federal and state investigative capacities. So seeing this play out in the fashion that it is, is somewhat unsurprising within that paradigm. But I just think in general, the American population has got a tremendous amount of curiosity and fascination when it comes to this stuff. Yeah. Whether it's a Hulu show, whether it's the a massive amount of coverage that this got at the time, or, you know, it's been all of these decades later and we're still feeling a need to talk about it. You know, one way or another, the American public just has an appetite for this stuff. And if that's yeah. a poor reflection of this, maybe that is the case. Mm -hmm. But it just is the way it is. Yeah. 
Um, so just to get to who they figured out uh, this guy was, the team of case breakers is a team of more than 40 former law inf uh, enforcement investigators, journalists, and military intelligence officers. And so this is the man. Uh, we have the picture right here. They're saying that it was Gary Francis Post. And you can see um, on the right of your screen there the, the drawing that has been uh, been kind of infamous with the Zodiac killings. And there's I think there's a clear resemblance there. I don't know. Grant, do you think there's kind of a clear resemblance in that picture? Or I think there's definitely a resemblance. Um, in researching it a little bit for the story that I wrote, um, they were saying that the the scars and the lines on his head are kind of the giveaway. That the, mm -hmm. on this sketch, there's um, they call them scars. I don't know if they're scars, laugh lines, whatever they may be, but that they match with this picture of post that they found. And I'd say I'd say they're pretty close. I mean, yeah. it's not. It's not a dead match, but also, you know, the one on the right is a sketch and the other one is a, is a photograph. So they're not going to be perfect, but I think it's, it's pretty yeah. close. Yeah.